Joining the conversation is the chairman of the American Conservative Union and the founder of Cove Strategies, Matt Schlapp, also former Clinton 2016 campaign, campaign manager, uh, Robbie Mook. Uh, there is Matt Schlapp. Sorry, we should do a quick video, um, quick bit of video from San Bernardino, which we are also following. Uh, guys, but let's talk about what's going on in the White House today and specifically what Kristen just ended on, and that is this infighting between uh, Donald Trump's uh, senior advisor and special advisor, Steve Bannon, as well as his son-in-law and another special advisor, Jared Kushner. Uh, Matt, I was talking to uh, some sources close to Steve Bannon over the weekend who said that he's in a very bad place right now, that you don't want to go up against Jared Kushner, who of course is the president's son-in-law. He's somebody that Donald Trump can't fire. He's in a place that's similar to what Paul Manafort was in when right before he was ousted, where there was just too many neg negative headlines surrounding him and too much drama that was taking away from Donald Trump's message. Matt, what are you hearing? Uh, you know, I'm hearing that the president actually has uh, assembled a group of people that are incredibly diverse. I mean, I've worked in a White House. There's usually a pool of people you pick from, and the president has mostly decided to pick different types of people who have not had very much political experience. Jared Kushner is a Democrat. Steve Bannon is maybe a Republican, but he's mostly just a, a disruptor on the right. And, uh, and then you have others as well. And it does create for a different kind of White House than we've probably ever seen. But out of that, the president hopes to get diverse uh, opinions and uh, advice, and hopefully it leads uh, to good decisions. How do you work, though, Matt, when somebody is, as you said, a Democrat and somebody else is not really a Republican um, or whatever Steve Bannon ultimately right. is? An economic nationalist. I mean, these, are, these aren't just competing ideolo ideologies. Those are um, ideologies that are yeah. in direct conflict with each other. How do you run a White House like that? Okay, it's a great question. A lot of us looked at the creation of the White House staff and said, I wonder how this is going to work. Because for Republicans, really, your fight uh, when, you, when you win a White House and you're so much of the time fighting the bureaucracy, which tends to lean left, and uh, usually you're unified politically with the political jobs and you're fighting the bureaucracy. What we have so far in the Trump administration is real conflict at the political appointee level as well. But uh, I have to say, after this week, most people are looking at it and saying, as fitful as some of the headlines are, um, it seems to be working. Uh, Robbie, is there any real belief among Democrats that Donald Trump is somebody who is actually moderate behind the scenes? Donald Trump is somebody who is not an ideologue, somebody who they can work with, if only someone like Steve Bannon and maybe the more conservative or more um, uh, disruptive influences in the West Wing are only put to the side and, and someone like Jared Kushner is brought to the forefront in terms of shaping Donald Trump's agenda? Well, I think the, the major issue here is that Donald Trump governs by chaos. He runs his operation by chaos. Uh, you know, his companies never had to be accountable to a board or anything. It's all kept within the family. And he seems to be running the White House uh, the same way. I mean, let's just step back for a second and realize when we're talking about Kushner, this is his son-in-law. And I think a lot of people would question, you know, whether those sorts of choices are really appropriate uh, to run the free world. But I think the other issue that this gets to uh, is that what I think President Trump needs around him are people who can help him, this has been brought up, navigate not just the bureaucracy, but Congress itself. And I think the failure to pass uh, any sort of health care bill, which I think was a good thing. I'm glad that Obamacare wasn't overturned, but I think the failure to accomplish that uh, showed us that not only is Donald Trump not really equipped uh, to maneuver the legislative process, um, but he also doesn't really have a command of the substance. He was never really able to negotiate with members of Congress about the policy details, and the people around him are not providing him with that support to be successful in that arena. So my larger concern, just going forward as an American, uh, is that I don't see anybody in this White House who's really able to guide the president through these situations. Situations. We see people traveling around a lot and talking to a lot of people. And I do think it's slightly disturbing that uh, the son-in-law of the president of the United States, who's younger than I am, if you can believe that, uh, seems to be uh, leading our foreign policy with big countries like China. Um, but oh, don't I, I, you, you forgot. There's, he's leading foreign policy in every respect. There's the negotiating peace between Israel and the Palestinians. There's uh, what's going on in Iraq. There's North Korea. I mean, everything seems to be on Jared Kushner's plate. 
Yeah, exactly. And I, again, I just, I, you know, I just think the president needs people around him who can guide him through. And eventually, we we need to see some success, not just in in launching a foreign attack, but in having a foreign policy strategy, and then having an actual strategy to get things done on the Hill. We just haven't seen either of those things. Well, Robbie, that was supposed to be Reince Priebus. And if you look at our, our big screen here, we've got these competing factions that are in the West Wing right now. There's the A team, that's Ivanka, Jared, Hope Hicks, who's been there forever, and then there's Team Bannon, uh, who uh, you can see on the screen, and also Team Reince, Reince Priebus, Sean Spicer, uh, among them. Uh, Shane Goldmacher, you were, uh, you got some uh, good reporting out of the West Wing today and that in terms of what exactly is going on and, and what the, the the messaging is there doesn't seem to be a coherent message coming out of uh, the White House and that's because the staffers don't really know what Donald Trump stands for is there a, a Trump doctrine Sean Spicer just said it was America first yeah there's definitely just and inside the West Wing, there's a real obsession about this 100-day mark, not because it's necessarily important legally in any fashion, but because it's a big media deadline, and Donald Trump watches so much media, and so the press staff is really, really intense on shaping this, this deadline. You heard Sean Spicer say, we're on day 81, and they are counting down the days, and uh, the reporting you mentioned was uh, last week there was a planning meeting for how to communicate the 100-day agenda, and there was really disagreements, deep disagreements within Trump's communications team, uh, within people at this planning meeting. <laughs> meeting over how to present what Trump has accomplished so far. Is there a um, realization and a, an acknowledgement that they do need to reset, that they need, do need to find uh, some new messaging because so far what they've been doing hasn't been working? Well, while Sean Spicer outlined what the Trump doctrine was today, uh, you know, I learned that Mike Dubke, who's his communications director, told a set of Trump staffers there is no Trump doctrine. Uh, and that did not go over well. And I think that Spicer's comments today may be in part trying to, to amend that, <laughs> that behind closed door statement. Uh, you know, they really have not settled exactly on what they've done so far, and they pulled out butcher block paper and markers to make a list of these things. Uh, you know, they do have some framing. They want to talk about the border crossings that Spicer mentioned today, too, dramatically down. That's something that they say Trump's swearing in basically changed immigration policy. Uh, but on legislative achievements, they really don't have anything of substance so far. Matt, does it worry conservatives to see somebody like Jared Kushner, who you call a Democrat, might have uh, more and more influence within this administration? Yeah, of course. I mean, Look, uh, it's a diverse set of advisors, and when it comes to the president's family, uh, his son-in-law and his daughter, who he's very close to, you know, they have different politics. It doesn't worry me so much because, you know, whether or not they're inside the White House or outside the White House, he's going to talk to them. That's what presidents do with the family members or friends. They hold close as they talk to them. What I like about this setup is at least Jared and Ivanka have gone through the ethics process. They have very competent lawyers, and at least now it's all above board so we can see it. If there are advisors on the outside of the White House and they don't have to go through any of these hoops, he's still going to call them. Presidents always call who they want. You know, Hillary Clinton, I saw her campaign. She had Chelsea at her side throughout that campaign. Chelsea worked at the foundation. I assume if she was president that she would have uh, consulted with Chelsea Clinton. Guess what? I think that's normal, and I think to expect those conversations to cease uh, is, is somewhat strange. Matt Schlapp, Robbie Mook, and